Mildred DeLuise Taylor was born on September 13, 1943, in Jackson, Mississippi. A few weeks after her birth, racial segregation and heavy racism in the South prompted Taylor's parents, Wilbert Lee Taylor and Eletha Marie Davis Taylor, to move Mildred and her sister Wilmer to the northern state of Ohio. Despite the family's move away from the South, strong family ties to their extended family in Mississippi caused Taylor and her family to make routine trips back to the South. These trips would prove to play an integral role in Taylor's writing career. It was during these trips that Taylor would listen to family members tell stories of their ancestors. In her Horn Book Award acceptance speech on March 1989, Taylor recalls her exposure to storytelling and is quoted as, I remember my grandparents' house, the house that my great-grandfather had built at the turn of the century, and I remember the adults talking about the past. As they talked, I visualized all the family who had once known the land, and I felt as if I knew them too. Many of the stories told were humorous, some were tragic, but all told of the dignity and survival of a people living in a society that allowed them few rights as citizens and treated them as inferiors. Much history was in those stories, and I never tired of hearing them. It was these stories that would inspire Taylor to become a writer. Her desire to become a writer would continue on through all of Taylor's years in school. In 1961, she received her high school diploma from Scott High School. She then attended the University of Toledo, where she received her degree in 1965. Taylor next joined the Peace Corps and spent the next two years in Ethiopia, where she worked as an English and history teacher. Her experiences in Ethiopia further influenced Taylor to write about her experience and those of her family but more importantly about the plight of the African-American in the United States. After receiving her master's degree in journalism from the University of Colorado, Taylor settled in Los Angeles, California and began her career as a writer. She published her first book in 1975 entitled Song of the Trees. Using some of the same characters from Song of the Trees, Mildred D. Taylor next published Roll of Thunder, Hear My Cry in 1976. The book would go on to win the Newbery Award Medal in 1977. Roll of Thunder, Hear My Cry is set in the deeply segregated Mississippi during the 1930s. It follows Cassie Logan, her two brothers, Christopher John and Little Man, and her mother and father, as they struggle to hold on to their own little piece of land. The book is told from Cassie's point of view. She is the second youngest child in the family and has a quick temper. Cassie and her family own a small piece of land, something that is not commonplace in the South. They are neighbored by Harlan Granger, a rich plantation owner eager to gain back the Logan's family land at whatever cost. In the beginning of the story, the Logans, along with the other African-American families, are shocked to hear that a black man has been killed by a lynch mob. Even more terrifying is the reality that no one will be brought to justice for the murder. As the story progresses, the Logan's family friend, T.J. Avery, befriends two white boys named Melvin and R.W. Sims. Together they develop a reputation for committing petty theft and other small crimes. The father of Melvin and R.W. Sims is a mean shop owner. Since it is the only store in the surrounding area, sharecroppers are forced to buy supplies from Mr. Wallace. Since times are tough, the sharecroppers are unable to pay in cash. Instead, Harlan Granger, the owner of the land that they sharecrop on, pays their tab. The sharecroppers are then forced to pay off their debt by working on the land, ensuring that they remain forever working on Harlan Granger's property, unable to pay their debt. When it is discovered that Mr. Wallace had also been responsible for the burning of the black man in the beginning of the story, the Logans decide to take a stand. The Logans decide to boycott Mr. Wallace's store. They also begin to convince the other sharecroppers to boycott his store in order to shop in Vicksburg. 
The Logans helped the sharecroppers by then transporting goods from Vicksburg to the families. This causes Mr. Wallace and Harlan Granger to become very angry with the Logans, even more so when the Logans refuse to stop the boycott. One night, Mr. Logan is attacked, and his leg is broken as a result. Harlan Granger continues to exact his revenge on the Logans, forcing them to pay a loan that they had taken out from the bank. Unable to pay the loan, Uncle Hammer is forced to sell his brand new Cadillac in order to come up with the funds. Tensions in the book escalate with the growing violence against black families in the community. One night, an injured T.J. Avery shows up at the Logan's door. He explains to the children that he had gone with Melvin and R.W., believing that they were going to purchase a pistol for him. Instead, they had intended to rob the store and injured the owners. The children agree to take T.J. back to his home. On the way, however, T.J. is captured and taken away by a lynch mob that believes he is guilty of committing the crime that R.W. and Melvin had committed. Fearing that T.J. will be hung, the children quickly race back to their home to tell their parents of what has happened. Mysteriously, a fire begins to burn in the cotton field. This causes a distraction for the lynch mob and ultimately saves T.J.'s life. Cassie later discovers that her father had set the fire in an effort to save T.J.'s life. The book closes with the community, black and white, working together to put out the fire. Unfortunately, T.J. is arrested. Mildred would continue the story of the Logans with her next two novels. The next novel, entitled Let the Circle Be Unbroken, picks up where Roll of Thunder Hear My Cry ended. T.J. is tried by an all-white jury. Although he is wrongly convicted, the jury sentences him to die. Using the characters in the novel, Mildred presents the reader with many of the social problems that African Americans faced in the United States as a result of racism and segregation, their inability to form unions, dismal working conditions, and unequal opportunities for African Americans. In the next sequel, The Road to Memphis, Cassie is now 17 years old. During the Logan's family trip with their friend Mo, Statler Ames, a local racist, begins to insult Cassie and her two brothers. This angers Mo, and he beats on Ames and his two brothers with a crowbar, knowing that Mo, like TJ, would not be given a fair trial because he was black. Cassie and her brothers drive Mo to Memphis, where he will be safe. Using primarily African-American characters, Mildred D. Taylor writes extensively about many of the same themes, including racism, prejudice, injustice, and the power of a united family. Her books are written from a first-person point of view. The characters that she uses throughout her works are modeled after many of her own family members and acquaintances. Her work entitled The Land serves as one such example. For inspiration, Taylor used her great-grandfather as a model. Her grandfather, like Paul in the story, had also been the son of a plantation owner and black slave. He too endured much strife in an effort to purchase his own piece of land. Due to her realistic portrayal of events that occurred pre-Civil War and post-war, Mildred D. Taylor's works can be classified as realistic fiction. Taylor has won a multitude of awards throughout her career. To date, she has been awarded the Coretta Scott King Award four times. This award is presented annually to an African-American author for a, quote, outstandingly inspirational and educational contribution. In 1988, she was also honored by the Children's Book Council for her body of work. When describing her work, Taylor states, My stories might not be politically correct, so there will be those who will be offended, but as we all know, racism is offensive. It is not polite, and it is full of pain. 